everyone. Today is um, Monday, July 23rd, and I wanted to say um, good evening from the Global Economic North. I'm not sure what to call today's video, but I just wanted to say that um, I just received some disturbing news, and um, the disturbing news was that the African Canadian Legal Clinic in Ontario is now closed. Now, when I heard about that, I was like, how? How did this even happen? And it amazes me to even wonder, how is it that even being in the most diverse, the so-called most diverse province in Ontario, how come the government could not, did not intervene and say, okay, you know what, this is what we're going to do to move forward because one of the things we have to do is to ensure that people have some kind of space or platform where they could also process, you know, different types of grievances that they're actually dealing with. So, um, I don't know what happened. I just heard I was speaking with a very nice uh, black woman from Somalia, and uh, she is involved in um, working with very, very marginalized um, populations. And um, we just had this really nice conversation, and you know, I was like, wow, I, I really respect this woman. So she was the one who told me, she said, yeah, the African Canadian Legal Clinic is closed. And I thought to myself, like, how? How could that happen? But on the other hand, um, it also makes me think about the need to actually process things internationally. Because depending on what government is in power in Canada, um, you know, can determine what different things will happen to you. So, um, the African Canadian Legal Clinic is closed, and um, I remember a couple years ago I did contact them because I was interested to connect with a black lawyer that was also familiar with racialization processes and uh, violences related to uh, biomedical stuff and um, biomedical abuse, biomedical profiling. And uh, I got in touch with them because I wanted to see how I could actually strategically align with them to maybe be a part of their board of directors or um, even formulate some kind of like structure or create some kind of mentorship because I'm also working on some stuff where um, I can get certain credentializing things in place so that I can also process different things related to um, different kinds of dehumanizations. So um, I would love to say everything and share everything, but on the other hand, um, I also want to, you know, keep things as surprises, right? So, um, I got in touch with the African Legal Clinic a couple years ago, um, must have been about five, six, maybe even seven years ago, so, like, I've just had this really awful experience with uh, racial profiling getting into the way of even the development of my, you know, career stuff. And, um, I can't recall at this time specifically when I contacted them, but I think I have the package somewhere in my office, excuse me, um, that they had sent to me. And I was interested in becoming um, a member of the organization and uh, sitting on the board of directors or in, in the um, some kind of strategic area where we could also look at ensuring that this place never closes. So um, this option is never, never 
unaccessible. So um, it brings me to some thoughts about some of the things that I was actually writing about in my preliminary university studies. And I was writing about, you know, the problem with access to justice. And um, access to justice comes in different forms. It could be in the form of, like, policy. It could be in the form of, like, you know, filing a particular parliamentary bill. But it could also be in the form of, um, you know, interpreting the law um, or different laws to try and, um, you know, come to some kind of solution. So one thing I've noticed about, you know, just sort of the entrance into this whole legal field is that they have like a lot of these stupid, like, barriers and, you know, you have to write some stupid tests. And uh, when you actually look at the structure of, for example, the LSAT, it's very, very disrespectful to how you would actually engage with a client when it comes to um, trying to process different problems related to um, environmental injustices, uh, for example. And um, let me go back on that thought. When you actually, not environmental justices, sorry, I'm, I'm going off kind of in different places here. But what I'm trying to say is that um, there's all these barriers in place. And when you actually look at, like, these stupid hurdles that they put up, like, I say to myself, why the fuck do I have to write this test? And I've written the test, and um, I was also racially profiled. So I didn't have the ability to prepare myself even physically to just be in sort of the right mode to concentrate on things, really articulate myself, and work to the best of my best ability. So uh, racial profiling got in the way with me, it got in my way. Um, I did write um, the first LSAT, and I was just like, this is a really fucked up test, because it's structured in a way where you don't even actually use your brain to think about anything. And I said to myself, this is actually not how processing, problem-solving things should even work. So I think they need to just scrap that whole bullshit related to the LSAT because there's a lot of people that get intimidated by that. And when you look at, like, a lot of, um, like, things that colonial folk or colonization beneficiaries, they built up all these structures to sort of protect themselves. So even though they were saying that, you know, they're doing this or they're, they're doing that or trying to address humanity or whatever, what they were doing is the reality of the situation and the practical part of stuff is that they say on the outside that they're doing this, but on the inside, it's, it's all of them in this generic culture. And when you look at the LSAT and write this thing, it's like you can't even think like strategically, logically, and comprehensively about how to approach different, different problems. And um, so, you know, I'm really sad to hear about, excuse me, the closure of the African Canadian Legal Clinic. What I wanted to do was um, I wanted to learn from the work of, uh, I think her name is Linda McKeever, and um, I really should know her name, but I love her work. She's a black female in the United States. Um, she has legal training, and what she did was she, she processes environmental justice cases, and I'm talking about environmental justice, uh, the conception by Dr. Robert Bullard in the United States. So what this Linda McKeever did, I, I could be saying her name wrong because I don't have the text to refer to her work, but um, what she did was she actually took parts of like environmental um, violences, so she took like, um, I don't know, it could have been like a license number for um, 
the application for some kind of development project. And what she did was she actually took that thing and processed it as, um, in the United States, a constitutional or a civil rights abuse. And she actually did the first case back, I think, in the 1980s. And you know what? She won. So I wanted to build upon that because I thought that was just awesome. And um, so I got in touch with the African Canadian Legal Clinic about, it's got to be about like five, seven years ago. And um, I asked them to send me a package because I wanted to get involved with the organization. And now they're closed. So um, racial profiling also set me back. So, you know, it doesn't take me like, you know, 10,000 years to get something done. But it seems like as I move forward, you know, racial profiling comes into my life and then what it does is actually pushes me back like you know like 20 years back so I'm gonna hold them accountable for everything and I just want to do everything myself I'm not interested in you know getting some kind of constitutional rights lawyer or whatever because these so-called lawyer people when you actually talk to them they can't paraphrase what you're saying and then even when you actually are dealing with a person that looks like you, you have to be careful because if they're fucking a Becky or they're fucking the thing that actually lynched them, then they may have a problem with you talking about racialization and black-white dichotomy issues. So um, I wanted to get involved with the African-Canadian Legal Clinic about seven years ago and uh, see if I could form some kind of um, strategic alliance maybe in the form of some kind of mentorship or something where I could also write their work into the development of my um, academic work. So um, I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm going to look into what happened. Um, I don't know why the Law Society of Upper Canada didn't intervene and say, okay, you know what, we know that, you know, the access to this kind of thing is um, needed, why didn't they intervene to keep this thing open? I don't know if it was a matter of just getting rid of like the board or, you know, I don't even know how they were structured or, you know, maybe it was the, um, the bigotry outside the board that said, okay, if you don't do things this way or the white way, then you know what, too bad for you. So I don't know what happened, and I'm really sorry to hear that. And um, it just it just complicates things now because I was just like, wow, I'm gonna, you know, develop Dr. Bullard stuff. I'm gonna, you know, do stuff related to um, legal petitions, related to you know some of the things that now he's deceased. Uh, Dr. Masazumi Harada worked on and um, you know when I think about like this whole racial profiling thing like you know I'm just speaking about it in very in terms so that I also don't feel degraded and uh, I don't like to be reminded that you know I was violent I was antagonized I was dehumanized I was beaten up you know, I had the shit kicked out of me, but I guess, you know, <laughs> I don't know, those experiences are kind of funny, actually, because, um, you know, it took them 17 men to stop me to put me in my place. So it was me against 17 men. So, um, you know, the experiences that I've gone through, believe me, um, racial profiling in Ontario under the Ontario provincial structure and under a particular um, political persuasion, I'm going to hold them accountable. And um, I am just really sorry that they close. I hope that, you know, something can be worked out to um, start back up this clinic again. Um, I don't know if there were problems with like board management because one thing I notice in um, Ontario is that you know it's nice to see the black faces and stuff but <laughs> even today I was outside talking with somebody and um, this black bitch she was probably from Jamaica which I'm also from Jamaica 
but uh, or of a Jamaican background, I should say. But this bitch, she looked at me like I was some kind of dirty piece of rag or whatever, and I looked at her and I said, you know, I could just cut her up. But I said to myself, you know what? I don't want to slap her shit because when you see another black person, why do they behave like this? And this woman, she was dressed up in some kind of uniform thing like she was some kind of nurse. And I'm going to get there when it comes to these fucking stupid black pieces of shit. I don't even know where they come from. Some of them are from the islands. Some of them are from Jamaica. And they're real fucking crusty and dirty. And really, really dirty. So, you know what? I can get really fucking dirty as well, too. And why the fuck are they like that? So, this woman, she looked at me, and she was a black woman, and she had her hair all, like, you know, twirled up or whatever. She's probably one of those, like, you know, she prays God every Sunday and sort of recolonize herself. So, um, she looked at me, and she looked at me in a very degrading way. And then all the white people, she said hi, she said hi to them, but she didn't say hi to me. And I was trying to, like, look at her and say, hey, how you doing? You know, hello, how you doing? Have a nice day. And go about my business. But the way she looked at me was like she had a problem with me. And um, I'm saying this to say that, you know, even though in Ontario, Canada, you see, like, black folk and whatnot, you have to be very, very, um, sort of put your radars on to, to analyze, like, is this like a house negro or is this like a field black? So, um, you know, some of these religified people out here are very disgusting. And then I find that a lot of them are actually involved in stuff related to biomedical also abuses. So, me and them are not going to get along. And, um, you know, if I had my way, I would be the one to... Um, you know, put the gun in their mouth and shoot them dead. I really believe capital punishment should be actually brought back to Canada. And, you know, there's different things that I'm actually working on because if you actually just experience the extent of the abuses in Ontario, Canada, and then you see, like, you know, sort of these black-white structures, but then you see within the people of color community, you see like all these like different layers of stuff. That is why I can't seem to understand why something like the African Canadian Legal Clinic would close. Because when you're actually dealing with a black person, it's good to deal with them because they understand things about oppression, you know, they can paraphrase, they've probably gone through the experience. But on the other hand, as a black person, I have to, and you know, some of my friends from the United States brought this to my attention. They said, you know, Livin, you have to also remember that we will never be a homogenous group because you have the ones that were trained in the house and the ones that experience experiences out in the field. So on that note, I wanted to say um, I'm really sorry to hear that the African Legal Clinic closed. I'm not sure why the Law Society did not, the Law Society of Upper Canada did not intervene. Um, I don't know if I'm really interested in going kind of like a generic culture route. Um, aligning with them so that they can actually get the credit for everything. I'm not sure if I actually want to do that. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm thinking about some things, but I'm just really sorry to hear that. And I hope that, you know, somebody from that arena can actually start something up again. Because one thing I notice in Ontario is that you know, for some reason, you know, things are sort of structured, but they actually don't last. And, uh, you know, there was something that was happening. They had this center. I think it was called the Marcus Garvey Center. And apparently the government, the liberal government, like I can't stand the liberal 
party of uh, Canada. And I don't know why any black person who is actually informed could even, um, would even vote for something called the Liberal Party of Canada. And um, I know also within our community, um, you know, especially when you talk about sort of the, the you know, the dynamics being a person of uh, a Jamaica background, you know, you have these people that think that, you know, they've been, they've been sort of colonized by, you know, different colonization things. So it's, it's very, very um, interesting to deal with these complexities. And when I actually deal with a petitioner, I want to deal with a petitioner who actually can see and understand and also feel different layers um, or intersecting um, aspects of the different layers and how they all sort of gel and intersect. I only want to deal with people who can think like that and actually articulate themselves like that as well. So, um, you know, in a way where they can understand these different layers. And for some, in some way, I gotta, I gotta work on like just putting it out there that, you know, this is what makes my practice very different. But um, I was very interested to carry on the tradition from what Linda McKeever started in the United States. She's a black female and she's a civil rights petitioner, but what she does is she processes environmental, um, environmental degrading um, experiences as civil rights abuses, and I thought that was just friggin' awesome. So, I don't know, maybe some kind of group can be formed and you know, maybe petition, you know, make a presentation to the Law Society of Upper Canada. You know, maybe it might take just a personal letter from somebody to say, hey, you know, let me reach out to the Law Society of Canada and uh, ask them if they could actually um, oversee the operations because, you know, they have specialization in things. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of problems with, like, law society stuff. I mean, these people, you know, they tear out pages out of, like, different documents because they don't want other people to access them. And, you know, they write these stupid, like, responses in, like, two minutes. And to me, that tells me that there is something wrong with their brain. Because if you can't take the time to listen, activate, respond, and be appropriate, then you know what? You are someone that I don't want to deal with. So on that note, um, I'm just really sorry to hear that. And uh, I don't know what to say. On that note, um, I just hope that, you know, some black folk can get together because, um, you know, even with this Marcus Garvey place that they had, you know, they got like this big building and they were only paying like a dollar rent and um, the place closed. So I don't know why things happen to work out that way, but I'm also coming from an Alberta sort of professional structure awareness, I guess. I don't know. And, uh, you know, when it comes to participating in, you know, different types of innovations and stuff, I guess I just have to look at, like, you know, maybe I might be the one to start up something. I don't know. I just, I have to think about some things. But I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about to hear that. And I hope that those black petitioners, the good ones out there, can actually work together and say, okay, you know what, fuck it, we're going to start up something and then reach out to the community to see how we can also help them do, you know, whatever they need to do. Because not everybody wants to be a legal petitioner. And then you can also do legal petitions through policy, through writing personal letters, through video advocacy. Like, there's so many different ways. So you don't have to go to law school, but 
I actually want to, um, like, get rid of lo this stupid thing called the LSAT, because, um, it's just another sort of barrier to sort of cater to the dysfunction of, like, the white mind, but not cater to the complexity of a, com a complex thinker. So, um, and when you're dealing with clients, you need to be very respectful to them. You need to, you know, take the time to say, okay, you know what, I've got an hour or, you know, let me give you like three hours of, 